Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to uh, Hobby Network's uh, webinar on SSL Everywhere. So today we're going to spend a couple of minutes to talk about SSL, some advances in the SSL industry, and how this is uh, the technology has been changing and, and evolving, and how that can be applicable in today's uh, modern environments, uh, especially for application delivery and load balancing. So I'm Ian McMahon, uh, Product Management here at Avi Networks. So on the agenda, I'm going to go over a couple of new uh, acronyms in, in the world of SSL. I'm going to go over a little bit about SSL performance, particularly for software-based SSL. And I'll do a quick demonstration of a couple of the points that we make during this uh, uh, presentation, and then a couple of last-minute recommendations. So if you have any questions, please feel free to um, uh, type in your questions and we'll address those as they pop up or at the end of the session. So in the world of SSL, there's been a lot of advances and a lot of changes, and yet most environments uh, I've found that uh, customers that I've interacted with have not changed, adapted, or necessarily kept up with a lot of the changes in SSL itself. So SSL is by no means static. Uh, we originally started out with SSL version 2, version 3, and that's migrated into TLS, and you know, it's going to continue to as well. Right now, the most recent version of TLS 1.2, and there's uh, work underway for the RFCs for TSA, TLS 1.3. So SSL is not staying static. Attacks against SSL are not remaining static either. So as this industry moves forward, our knowledge of it also has to, and our implementations within our public and private websites also needs to take advantage of these changes. So the first... Um, First uh, one that I want to talk about is server name indication. So for load balancing environments where you have virtual hosting with SNI or server name indication, this gives you the ability to uh, provide SSL encrypted virtual hosting. So one IP port domain name, uh, one IP port can handle not just one domain name, but multiple domain names. Without SNI, what would happen is that uh, an SSL hello is sent and the server has to respond back with the SSL certificate. And the problem is that the server doesn't know which domain the client actually wanted to access. So this problem was resolved roughly in 2004, but it's taken a very long time for the implementation to percolate down into all browsers. So what's, so what's changed with this is that SSL uh, SNI is now viable because we've now come to the end of uh, SSL v3. So there's still environments that support SSL v3, but it's now considered to be less secure and, and basically not secure enough. The most recent nail in the coffin was the Poodle attack late last year. And with that, it was a method by which you could downgrade the SSL security and eventually steal the certificates and uh, decrypt SSL uh, traffic. So with S uh, SNI requires TLS, which is TLS1 or later. So with this, now that SSL v3 is being deprecated across the industry, that means that all clients will support uh, TLS. This now gives us the ability to have to solve the chicken and the egg problem of uh, SNI. So Avi's implementation is, is actually quite interesting and quite unique. What you do is you create a virtual service that's going to be for a, uh, the default, which is, let's say, dub, dub, dub. You can then create additional virtual services for dub, 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 one, dub, 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 two, dub, 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 three, and they can all be child or children of that parent virtual service. So this gives you the ability uniquely to see statistics on a per virtual service basis of, or a per domain basis, but you can also then look at the macro uh, parent virtual service and see all traffic in one statistic. So this is something where it's always been an issue and a problem with our load balancing type vendors is you don't really have the ability to uniquely identify which site someone was going to or it requires a lot of custom scripting. And with Avi, it's pretty slick. It's just point and click to set this up. So this is one change that you're going to see in the industry over the next couple of years is the adoption of SNI is finally something we can do and do safely without uh, worrying about compatibility with the clients. The next one is HSTS, or HTTP Strict Transport Security. And this is a method for mitigating man-in-the-middle attacks. So a man-in-the-middle attack is going to be a client is initially negotiating with the site at HTTP, and then they switch over to HTTPS or are redirected to HTTPS. And what can happen is that that server sends back that first response as a, uh, HTTPS. A man in the middle using a tool like Firesheep is able to downgrade that connection and change it and swap it out to say just 
connect to this site using HTTP. So what HSTS, what this tells the browser is that if you come to this site anytime, let's say in the next six months, only come to this site and access it via SSL. Don't access it via H HTTP. So this is something that uh, really helps to mitigate a lot of things like the wi Wi-Fi hotspots is where we're primarily are seeing these kinds of attacks. When you're using free and public uh, access like this, someone using Fire Sheep is going and intercepting your traffic without you necessarily even knowing that it's happening. They're using a falsified certificate, et cetera. So HSTS is something that's um, just come about. The uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation, the EFF, has been pushing this for the last couple of years. And it's something that everyone should be seriously considering adopting for any SSL-enabled sites. So with Avi's implementation, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a checkbox, and HSTS is enabled. So it's no, com no complexity. It's something that everyone should take a look at and understand the value of this. Uh, our next advance is uh, elliptic curve, elliptic curve cryptography. And this is a huge, ugly, mathematically complex subject. But basically what ECC is, is it's an alternative and a dramatically newer alternative to utilizing RSA as the, for things like the certificates and keys for calculating or doing the encryption. Um, elliptic curve is, like any implementation, it really depends upon did you implement it correctly. It's not necessarily that ECC is more secure. What ECC is important is that it's uh, able to provide the same level of security at dramatically less computational cost meaning if a 256-bit elliptic curve certificate is approximately the same as an RSA 3K certificate, so 3,000 bits versus 256 bits. And what this means is that for the clients, uh, it's going to be dramatically less expensive for the compute. So for anyone that's using a mobile device, if they're doing uh, accessing an SSL site, it literally takes about half as much power on their mobile phone to decrypt or access encrypted pages using ECC versus um, an RSA. So for the Internet of Things or mobile, et cetera, this is very valuable. On the server side, that also means that negotiating SSL is approximately one-fifth the cost. And that helps to mitigate things like uh, SSL types of uh, DOS attacks that helps to ensure scalability. And then also it helps to ensure that we no longer need to rely on antiquated, uh, dedicated hardware ASICs for SSL. So what's interesting about Obvious implementation is that Obvious supports elliptic curve certificates. We also or RSA, the older certificates, but Avi also supports both at the same time, which means anyone using a normal browser within the last five or ten years will negotiate just fine. If someone is using IE6, that's great. They can negotiate RSA, the older type of certificate. So this is uh, really important. Uh, this also leads into the next uh, subject, which is perfect forward secrecy. Perfect forward secrecy says that if you have a, a perfectly secure encrypted website, and someone is accessing it, it's possible to record that transaction even though it's encrypted, later go out and steal the certificates, and then after the fact, decrypt a recorded session. And this is something that we've seen happen a number of times, most recently with um, revelations about the NSA and uh, the U.S. government going and, rec uh, and grabbing the SSL certificates off of providers and off of ISPs and others and various sites. Also, um, attacks such as Heartbleed, where the certificate is, is able to be stolen. Someone can steal that certificate and then go and take a, take a look and decrypt past um, interactions with sites. So with Perfect Forward Secrecy, this says, I'm going to take that original certificate. Instead of directly using that to encrypt this connection, I'm going to use that to generate a one-time key. I'll use that key to, uh, to encrypt the connection, and then I'm going to discard that key so that you cannot, after the fact, decrypt this, which is why it's called Perfect Secrecy. Um, if you're using an RSA certificate, the older style certificate, it's very computationally expensive to use PFS. It's possible to do, but um, the, the computational cost is generally very prohibitive, and this is why you generally never see this enabled in the wild. With elliptic curve, it's just simply part of this newer encryption technology. It just comes at basically no cost. So when you're accessing a site such as Google or Facebook and others, you're going to see that they're using elliptic curve. You're going to see that they're negotiating perfect forward secrecy. They're taking advantage of these modern-day SSL capabilities. If you access a lot of uh, more kind of mom-and-pop shops, you'll see that they're still using the RSA certificates and that they've never migrated forward into taking advantage of these capabilities. So what's interesting about Avi's implementation is that Avi, by default, has a setting set so that we will use perfect forward secrecy. In other words, we're not trying to prioritize um, 
our ciphers or our SSL settings such that we're prioritizing speeds and feeds, we're trying to prioritize security first. If we need additional speeds and feeds, that's not a problem because of our Hydra scale-out architecture says we'll simply go and pick up capacity and grow the speeds and feeds if we need. If you're using a hardware-based load balancer um, with a hardware like a Cavium card, for instance, they're very, very finite in how much traffic they can push. Therefore, they tend to prioritize speeds and performance over things like security, like perfect forward secrecy. So with Avi, if you're, someone's negotiating with RSA or negotiating with Lift to Curve, that's okay. By default, we'll make them be perfect forward secrecy encrypted, which is really nice. And um, the important thing that we'll get to in a little bit during the demo is the visibility of this to be able to understand who's negotiating PFS and who is not is another very important um, uniqueness about Avi that we can show you how clients are interacting with this site. And last on the acronyms of what's, what's changed in the world of SSL is Speedy and HTTP2. So Speedy is uh, an effort by Google over the last couple of years to really improve the performance of HTTP. So it's built on top of HTTP 1.1 and it changes a number of different uh, mechanisms with how clients will interact and negotiate with uh, HTTP. Speedy was very, very successful, and uh, so much so that it's really forced a lot of internet governing bodies to work very rapidly on adopting HTTP2. So Speedy is an interim technology that is effectively, um, it's going to be phased out now over the next couple of months in, uh, and be replaced with an HTTP2. What's important about this and why this is relevant to SSL is that with Speedy, Speedy requires SSL to be negotiated before it can negotiate Speedy. If you do not negotiate or if you do not have SSL enabled, then the site would have to downgrade to HTTP 1.1. Um, there's a little bit of um, communication kind of problems with this because uh, you get a lot of different answers if you're reading about on the internet. With HTTP 2, Technically, the uh, IETF set the specs so that HTTP2 does not require SSL. However, the major browsers such as Firefox and Chrome, they went against the spec and said that if you do not have SSL enabled on your site, then they will only negotiate HTTP 1.1. They will not negotiate HTTP2. So there's a bit of a disconnect between what the RFC calls for and what the, what the um, browsers are themselves adopting. So that's um, something to keep in mind is that in order to take advantage of Speedy or HTTP2, you're going to need to have SSL enabled. Otherwise, clients are going to negotiate with just HTTP1, which is uh, 1.1, which is dramatically slower. HTTP2 is expected to be um, ratified in the next couple of weeks. So um, or by March of 2015, we expect that to be completed, and the browsers will be adopting this uh, support for this within a couple of months. Now, realistically, are you going to go and upgrade hundreds of thousands of servers in your environment to support HTTP2? Not likely at all, but that's why you have an interim proxy, such as a load balancer in place, so it's one checkbox to say, I want to make my site be HTTP2 compatible. And with that, you can make all of your sites be 30% faster at the click of one button. So that's something that's pretty important to be able to support and understand how that behaves and how easy it is to do. Interestingly as well, if you're using sites like uh, today, such as Google or CNN, uh, your browser is negotiating Speedy. So this is something that, as a client, you're not necessarily aware of, but it's something that's happening. And this will be the same as well with HTTP2. Um, so what's interesting about Avi's implementation with this is that we do support um, things like Speedy. Um, it's just a checkbox to enable the support for this. So it's very straightforward, very easy. And as you go and turn on SSL for all of these sites, Avi does not charge for SSL. SSL or SSL TPS or throughput. So turning on all of your sites and making all of your sites be encrypted is something of best practice. It's something that's not just for security, but is also going to dramatically improve the performance of your end user experience. So it's something that um, we are not going to charge for. That's like uh, the concept of charging for um, TCP. It just doesn't make any sense, and it's now outlandish to think that. Yet every other S uh, load balancing vendor today still does this. So moving off of the uh, SSL acronyms and a little bit of uh, SSL performance, particularly performance within software. So Avi, uh, to kind of talk a little bit about ourselves, we are purely software-based. We work in a number of different environments. It could be we could deploy an OpenStack on VMware, on Docker, on bare metal, in Amazon environments. So we're just going to deploy on whatever servers you've got. But a typical server well, with Avi deployed on it 
can handle about 8,000 TPS for RSA, or if you're using the, the 20 years newer technology of elliptic curve, we can handle over 30,000 SSL TPS, which is um, dramatically better and dramatically preferable. We can, you can push uh, easily 10 gigabit of throughput, of SSL throughput, through a single uh, server today. Uh, looking ahead at things like Moore's Law and x86 architectures, with each generation of CPUs, there's been dramatic enhancements to this. Uh, Intel and others have been pushing for uh, a piece called AESNI, which is pushing more and more of these instructions into dedicated uh, instructions within the CPU for SSL. So this means that with every generation of uh, CPU that we've seen, there's been pretty dramatic improvements in performance of SSL in addition to the enhancements of just the speeds and feeds of what uh, the new CPUs can handle. So certainly having things like more CPU cores, uh, every time you double the CPU cores, obviously able to double the throughput, double the performance. And as those cores get faster, we pick that up as well. So if you deploy Avi today in your environment and you're able to handle 100,000 SSL TPS, and a couple of years from now as you keep upgrading servers, you're going to find that Avi's performance just moves right along with that. And what's interesting about Avi uh, and Avi's architecture is our, our uh, Hydra architecture. What this allows is that we have the ability to scale out across multiple servers or across multiple service engines or load balancers in our case. Um, so there's a whole lot of um, webinars and other sessions you'll see that are dedicated to the architecture. So I'll skip that for today. But what's interesting about this is that you can take an application and it may be using, it may be pushing 1,000 SSL TPS today and it may grow to 100,000 SSL TPS. Uh, there's no cost to you, it just simply will grow or it'll shrink capacity as necessary. We just scale up or scale down and pick up more or fewer CPU cores. So across an entire Obby system, you can handle about 5 million SSL TPS. And uh, Obby doesn't charge anything for that, which is pretty slick. So let me go into a quick demonstration and show a little bit of what I've been talking about and how the implementation looks. So I'm logging into Obby's controller. So Obby has a centralized controller with decentralized distributed load balancers. So load balancers are called service engines. Um, so a couple of things. Let me go through and I'll create a new virtual service and just do a basic setup of a virtual service. Um, give it a name. I'll give it an, uh, an IP address. Uh, in this case, my name is in a DNS. It automatically picks that up. Uh, I can give it a bunch of servers. Um, I can set this up as uh, being, um, let's just give it an elliptic curve certificate. Um, and give us a couple of servers on the back end. Uh, if you know the IP address is great. If you're lazy like me, I never do. So just select all my Apache servers. And away I go with the, just a new virtual service setup. Uh, listening to, with my elliptic curve certificate. If I go back into this, though, what I can do is I can, I'll go and I'll say, I want this to be HTTP and HTTPS on the same virtual service. And I want this to be elliptic curve as well as uh, RSA. So what this means is that if a client comes in via HTTP, life is good. One of the other things I'll do here is uh, in my uh, security profile, I have this uh, SSL everywhere option checked. And with this, I'm just saying, just I just want this to work. I don't want to write any crazy custom scripts or rules. Just do things like if client comes down on HTTP, redirect them to HTTPS, enable H, uh, HTTP strict transport security, uh, if, if uh, servers are sending out cookies, make sure that they're uh, secured and you know just take care of it. The server sends out any redirects from H, uh, to HTTP when it should have been HTTPS. Just take care of all the obvious stuff for me. I don't want to have to know. I don't want to have to think about it. Maybe I do something like I drop in and say enable speedy on this as well. Great, life is good. And I can just save that. And at this point then, someone call, uh, logs in as HTTP. They'll be redirected to HTTPS. When they negotiate HTTPS, They'll either pick up and negotiate with an elliptic curve certificate, which is what we prioritize, or the older RSA certificate in case they happen to be um, like a BlackBerry 1.0 user or an IE6 or something like this that's much older and antiquated. So it's very straightforward and simple to do things like uh, take advantage of an uh, elliptic curve, to take advantage of the SSL everywhere, not have to write any custom scripts or anything crazy to do this. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, So I don't have any traffic pointed at this application, but otherwise it's up and running and, and away it goes. So I'll drop into another application that does have a little bit of traffic running on it. Um, so 
I've got an application here that uh, called Broken Link Virtual Service. Um, I'll save you the, um, the the excitement of finding out that this virtual service is a uh, is all about a, we have some broken HTTP links there that we can go and track down and show. But in this environment, what I've done is I've got I'm going to take a look at all the traffic over the past period of time. Um, let's say over the past hour or few minutes or whatever the case is going to be. Um, I'll have it show all of my logs. So by default, we show all of the, uh, we're showing every HTTP request to either all the errors or errors and successful requests. And I go to my safe searches here, and I see a search called, uh, which is searching for all all instances of uh, in the last hour. Anyone who's logged in with an iPhone who negotiated a perfect for secrecy, and uh, you can see that, that I logged in a couple of times with this. So it's a way that you can um, understand that if you're going and taking a look and saying. Which, which clients are negotiating perfect forward secrecy, which clients aren't, sort by browser, sort by, you know, how do you want to slice and dice this? What's important is that SSL is a trade-off between security, compatibility, and performance. Um, but the only way that you'll really know with these trade-offs is if you have the visibility to understanding what are users negotiating, are they not negotiating? If, if you set the security to the maximum levels and you say, I only want to support the absolute most secure ciphers and SSL versions, what's going to happen is that you're not going to be able to have compatibility for all of your clients. So if you do something like that, you set the security too high, you need to be able to come back and say, are any of my clients unable to negotiate? If so, you know, what levels were they, what was the minimum level that they needed to negotiate? So this gives you the ability to look in every HTTP request and I can filter by errors, I can filter by users who are unable to negotiate SSL and find out why they couldn't negotiate. So I can find out, hey, maybe I need to lower my security level a little bit to guarantee compatibility. And then the other aspect is when you turn on security and turn on the most stringent and advanced uh, SSL levels, what you'll also do is impact the performance. And that would be the performance of, uh, of Avi, for instance. So if you turn on a more stringent ciphers, that may double the amount of um, load that it takes to be able to handle this traffic which is okay with Avi, you can take a look and see what is, the, um, what is the impact of turning on SSL before and after, what was the CPU load, what is the end user experience when I turned on these ciphers or changed these ciphers. So you have the complete visibility of understanding as you make changes, did that improve my security, did that improve or, or my compatibility, and did that improve the end user experience and the performance of uh, Avi itself. So all of these are very important. Avi also has the ability to tell you that your site is uh, insecure because you misconfigured SSL in some way, such as you forgot to um, um, add the intermediate certificate. So when you're using a browser, it may look just fine, but what's going to happen is the browser has to manually go and retrieve that intermediate certificate, and that may take an extra two seconds while users are negotiating with your site. In a case like that, it's just, hey, my site's slow, I don't know why. Avi will proactively, with the recommendation engine, just tell you, hey, you've misconfigured SSL, and this is what we recommend you do to fix it. So it's very important that um, not just to be able to turn on SSL, but to understand what are the results of this and did I do it correctly. Um, so this is one way that you can do this is simply by uh, searching through this live traffic and being able to understand what's going on. Um, other ways we can look at this as well is we can go and filter in various ways. We can go and take a look at some of the SSL uh, information to see how many connections were SSL of those connections, what percentages. Just different ways you can slice and dice this information. I'll go to one last uh, virtual service and one last uh, piece of this demo. So this virtual service right now is pushing traffic along. Um, if I switch it back to kind of the more classic throughput view, it's pushing about a quarter of a gigabit of traffic through. Uh, fairly stable right now. Life is good. Um, but right now it's um, uh, this health score is showing that I've got a resource penalty and I can drill down into the insights and it'll show me what my resource penalty is. And that penalty could be um, resources on Avi, or that could even be resources on the servers. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm actually saturating this, the CPU that this load balancer is sitting on. So I can go and I can explore into that. But a couple of things I can do here is right now I'm pushing about 200, 280 megabit of traffic. Right now I'm using a, an SSL cipher that's um, a profile that's using ciphers that do not support perfect forward secrecy. This would be pretty much akin to just about any other load balancer using today. What we'd recommend is we do something like let's prioritize and use a, um, a profile that's utilizing ciphers that prefer P PFS with elliptic curve. So by making that change, a couple things are happening. One of which is you see this little snowflake icon at the bottom, and that shows me that some administrator came along and made some particular change at this point in time. So you can see that 
when there's this big change in traffic, what happened and why. You can click onto that and go and expand upon that and say, oh, it looks like this particular person made this change. At user admin and changed that before and after and changed some particular policy setting. But you can see going from just um, um, an RSA certificate uh, with no perfect forward secrecy, uh, I was pushing 280 megabits of traffic. Now I'm turning on perfect forward secrecy with elliptic curve. I'm pushing uh, close to twice as much traffic now. And so this is more secure for end users dramatically. It's also more efficient and faster for uh, Avi. And it uses less battery power on my cell phone, which I greatly appreciate as a client. But at this point, I'm still pushing as much traffic through this as my load generator can push against before I run into the CPU load on my, on my load balancer. If you have this uh, obvious set up in an automated mode, this will just fix itself automatically and life is good. This particular demo, we set this one up in a manual mode. So what I can say is I'm currently running on uh, service engine 5 or load balancer number 5. I can hit the scale out button and say I want to scale out to using more than one load balancer. So I want to scale traffic across multiple. Um, and a couple of seconds later, our controller, which is sitting out of band, will go and uh, fire up another load balancer image. I get that booted up, configure the networking for that, and once that's up and live, then I've got two load balancers that are now able to distribute traffic. And so I can now push as much as my load generator can handle. So without any real configuration or complexity, I simply am able to go from whatever amount of traffic I could handle before to doubling that, or if I need to have more capacity, I could scale out again and pick up another uh, CPU core or two. So every time I continue to add uh, uh, resources, server capacity, I simply increase my SSL throughputs, my SSL capacity. So if you're asking how much SSL TPS can Avi handle, an Avi system can, can scale up to about 5 million SSL TPS. In other words, SSL TPS is really not the same problem that it was years ago. Uh, competitors and vendors are still pushing this as a me key metric to be able to charge more money, but it's a pretty antiquated metric. These problems were solved years ago. So you can see now that I'm now pushing significantly more traffic. And this is still very network-centric, how much traffic am I pushing? If I go back and I look at my end-to-end -end timing chart, you can see how much time on average users were taking about 12, 13 milliseconds uh, on average to get an HTTP request. Now that I made these changes, you can see that it's taking about a four milliseconds. This is all a load generator in a local LAN, but you can, you can absolutely get visibility into understanding, I made a configuration change to the system, did this positively or negatively impact my end user experience? which is the key question always. Is, is this more secure? Is this faster? Is this my, increasing my availability? I'm not seeing any errors here for HTTP requests. I'm not seeing any errors here for new connections. And I'm seeing that the end user experience is now about a third of what it was time-wise before. So life is good. Um, that kind of visibility is really important so that you can really pair the trade-offs of security versus compatibility versus performance. So I'll switch back to my presentation here. And um, so SSL everywhere on the recommendations, we recommend running on SSL. With HTTP2, with Speedy, you're going to have to encrypt sites anyway to take advantage of next generation uh, HTTP protocol. Uh, so there's no excuse for it. There's also no excuse for having poor security. If you're going to have SSL enabled, make sure it's set and configured correctly. And if you don't know how, then either use something like Avi, which will tell you that you've misconfigured or that, you've, that it's not as optimized, or you can take advantage of some third-party uh, tools and validation. Uh, I personally like Calamel, which is a, an extension that I can plug into Firefox, and it tells me that my site's secure or not secure, you know, whatever sites you're going to. It's just a simple little um, innocuous little shield icon up near the, the site name. Another one is SSL Labs by Qualys, and they'll go and do a full security review of your site and tell you how they rate your site. What they don't do, though, is that they're simply grading you on the security not necessarily on compatibility or performance. So if you set the maximum security you possibly can, they're going to give you a great score, even though half of your clients can't log in to your site. So that's where Avi comes in and can say, well, actually, yeah, that's great security, but let me show you which customers weren't able to negotiate, anyone with uh, IE version 8 or earlier, or these kinds of things. So you can understand what the impact is. Um, and last, obviously, I highly recommend 